I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a lecture for my professional responsibility class about Model Rule 8.1, Bar Admission and Disciplinary Matters. Now, for my students, Model Rules 8.1 to 8.5 are a section of the rules that the ABA calls maintaining the integrity of the profession. What these are really about is your relationship to the state bar and the bar's authority to license people and unlicensed lawyers, right, to disbar you or suspend your license. And whereas a lot of our other rules in the course are about the lawyer's relationship to the client or to other parties or third parties or even to courts, this rule is about your duty is to be a good citizen. Actually, uh, this set of rules, your duty is to be a good citizen in the legal community where you are licensed. So let's go back and see what we have in 8.1. An application for admission to the bar or a lawyer in connection with a bar admission application or in connection with a disciplinary matter shall not A, knowingly make a false statement of material fact. So first of all, stop right there. Don't lie to the bar, right? So it is an independent grounds for denial of your law of your application for a law license or of a, a, a disciplinary action like suspension or disbarment if you knowingly make a false statement um, to the bar in the process, right? So in relation um, with this to the bar. So if you said you worked someplace that you didn't work, you uh, stated where you went to college and you didn't really get your degree there, that would count as making a false statement. Now, these are material facts, not little typos. And if you honestly forgot something, normally we give you the opportunity to correct mistakes. But the ABA defines knowingly as actual knowledge, but actual knowledge can be inferred from the circumstances. So keep this in mind. Also note that this, apl this applies to lawyers who might be testifying to the bar on behalf of someone else. So if you are writing a recommendation letter um, or an affidavit for someone who is applying for a law license or is facing a grievance, you also have a duty to tell the truth. B, you shall not fail to disclose a fact necessary to correct a misapprehension known by the person to have arisen in the matter or knowingly fail to respond to a lawful demand for information from an admissions or disciplinary authority, except that this rule does not require disclosure of information otherwise protected by rule 1.6. So if you look at this section B that we have right here, let's unpack it. There are three real parts of it or components. First, omissions count as lies. Keep that in mind. It doesn't matter if you think that you didn't in technically make a false statement because you didn't make a statement at all. The rule required has creates an affirmative duty to disclose facts necessary to correct, correct a misapprehension known to have arisen in the matter. So if you strategically omit things or you realize they have you mixed up with someone else and it's to your advantage, they think you graduated at the top of your class from law school and you didn't, um, then uh, you have an affirmative duty to speak up and correct that. Similarly, you can be subject to discipline for failing to respond to inquiries or requests for admission from either the admissions authority like the board of law examiners or a disciplinary authority like a grievance committee. Every month in my state, I see some lawyers who are disciplined because they didn't respond to a grievance. And so even if the grounds against you, like the complaint against you, has no merit, by not responding, you have given the bar indep an independent grounds or basis to suspend your license or disbar you. And also note that um, this last clause about the exception for Rule 1.6 is applying to lawyers who are advocates on behalf of other lawyers. So there are some lawyers who represent other lawyers who are facing grievances or um, applicants to the bar like law school graduates who have to go to a hearing. 
If that's the case, that's different than, say, writing a letter on behalf of someone vouching for their character. Now you are their advocate and you have a client lawyer relationship. And so the duty of confidentiality, that's rule 1.6, would control or prevail over rule 8.1. In other words, your lawyer at your hearing, the person representing you, doesn't have a duty to speak up and correct um, <clears throat> things or fill in gaps and so forth uh, in the same way. Okay, comment one is the kind of scary part of this rule, I think. The duty imposed by this rule extends to persons seeking admission to the bar as well as to lawyers. Hence, if a person makes a material false statement in connection with an application for admission, it may be the basis for a subsequent disciplinary action if the person is admitted, and in any event may be relevant in a subsequent admission application. So I want to say something about this. Um, from time to time, we see cases where someone has lied about something like where they went to college, let's say, or um, uh, where they worked before law school on their application for a law license and somehow they got away with it. it nobody caught the lie the first time. Years later, they've been practicing as a lawyer. Someone files a complaint against the attorney or a grievance. And um, when that happens, the attorney comes under scrutiny. And in many cases, they're going to pull out your file, including your application for your original application to the bar to get licensed and kind of go through that again, checking for problems. And if they catch something at that point, they can discipline you, suspend your license or disbar you, even though you've been practicing for many years. And there are cases like this. And even if they decide that the pending grievance or complaint has no merit, when they discover that you lied on your original application years later, that can really come back to haunt you. So be careful with that. Okay, let's go back to our comments for the rule. Paragraph B of this rule also requires correction of any prior misstatement in the matter that the applicant or lawyer may have made and affirmative clarification of any misunderstanding on the part of the admissions or disciplinary authority of which the person involved becomes aware. In other words, if you made an honest mistake on your declaration of intent to practice law, your application, or um, during the grievance process, and it matters, it's a significant thing, even if you didn't intend to lie, you have an affirmative duty to correct misunderstandings that you have created or that were created by others, right? Someone else may have spoken up for you. Let's say a former professor mixed you up with another student or something like that um, and created a misunderstanding in your favor. You have a responsibility to correct that as well. Comment two. This rule is subject to the provisions of the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution and corresponding provisions of state constitutions. A person relying on such a provision in response to a question, however, should do so openly and not use the right of non-disclosure as a justification for failure to comply with this rule. So sometimes when lawyers are facing a grievance before the bar, um, they've really done something, they've done something that actually violates the law that they could go to jail for as well. And so they don't want to answer questions for the bar because it would be incriminating. And if that's the case, you do have a right under the constitution and the bar is uh, an entity, an organ of the state, right? Uh, of the government. You have a, a you have the right under the US constitution and most state constitutions, uh, against self-incrimination. But you have to, in bar proceedings, invoke that openly. You can't just not answer a question or use silence, maintain your silence, or pretend you didn't hear a question or something like that. And then later on, raise the Fifth Amendment as the reason that you fail to answer. If you are going to avail yourself or invoke the Fifth Amendment, you have to kind of do it openly and put in the, in the record. Okay, we're almost done. 
Three, a lawyer representing an applicant for admission to the bar or representing a lawyer who is subject to of a disciplinary inquiry or proceeding is governed by the rules applicable to the client lawyer relationship, including 1.6 and in some cases, rule 3.3. Remember that we have uh, some rules that are that require confidentiality like 1.6 so the lawyer who is representing you before the bar if you have to hire a lawyer and go to a hearing is going to have a lawyer, a client lawyer relationship with you so that will control instead of of the other provisions of 8.1. In other words, they have a duty of confidentiality and that's a little different than an, a friend who's a lawyer who is writing a recommendation or testifying on your behalf. And similarly, some of our other rules about candor to a tribunal or the duty not to um, uh, destroy evidence and so forth that are sort of truth requirements could also apply to the lawyer who is representing you before the bar. Okay, here's a quick review question to see if you've been paying attention. A graduating law student applied for admission to the bar. Even though the bar application or declaration of intent instructed applicants to list every prior place of employment for the last seven years, the graduate omitted summer bartending jobs from college because she thought they were not relevant to the practice of law. Could the state bar deny her admission to the bar for her failure to report these prior jobs? A, yes, because omitting a significant fact on a bar admission application, such as a prior place of employment, violates the ethical rules and counts as a misrepresentation. Or B, no, because an, admission, an omission of information cannot constitute a misrepresentation because she did not state anything that was untruthful and she had no intention of harming anyone by deceiving or misleading the authorities. Now, hopefully you know the answer to this. This was supposed to be an easy question. If you're not sure, you really should rewatch this video. And that concludes our lecture on model rule 8.1.